How long did it take for the Earth to end? Three short days. Looking from this window, it seems impossible to imagine that an invasion took place out there. How arrogant we were to assume that we were alone in the universe, and how complacent we had become going about our little lives, while all the time our world was being watched by an intelligence greater and far less sympathetic than our own. of Mars, we must have looked like germs under a microscope, but we were so blinded by our vanity that we could not imagine the possibility of invasion. It started on May the 23rd, 1953. The date has become as important to us all as 1066 or 1939. After three short days on the afternoon of May the 26th, we realized the terrible truth. For it was on that afternoon that we became finally aware of the uncertainty of humankind's survival. I had been visiting my friend Ogilvy at his Clifton Observatory in Bristol. I had seen with my own eyes the pinpoints of light that burst out of Mars, the red planet heading for Earth, as if shot by great guns. They came to us like falling stars, these cylinders, and when they landed, each one opened. BBC radio broadcasts told us that the nation was in a state of panic, but information was scarce, and rumours could not be believed. Who then were we to trust? Who could we turn to for help? How could we fight an enemy we could not even imagine? Only one fact was undisputed. We were under attack. Not from another nation as in times gone past, but from some far greater, more malevolent power. Their center was in London, where I was heading. When I came to, I found a scene of utter devastation. Alive and sound in body, thank heaven. But how long had I been unconscious? My watch. The hands had been frozen at the moment of impact. I no longer had any sense of time. I knew the city's population would be trying to escape to the countryside, but my brother Ben and my fiancée Emily were here in London, trapped at the heart of the conflict, and I had to find my loved ones. The train looked as if it was a child's toy that had been thrown to the ground. The carriages were twisted and crushed on each other, passengers screaming behind the melted windows, but there was no one to release them. During the Blitz, a bomb had fallen directly on the Waterloo line. This, this looked like a dozen had fallen. People were calling for help, desperate for a doctor, a leader, someone who could save them. Guiltily, I passed by. How could I stop for one without stopping for all? Our invaders 
seemed as tall as Bankside Power Station, fueling an engine more destructive than anything I could imagine. survivors cleared of the wreckage told me his name was Sergeant Jack Carstairs. It seemed he witnessed the attacks from the very start. A career soldier, decent, tough, and I imagined more than a little bull-headed. His senior officers were encamped on Primrose Hill to the north of the city, a military vantage point from which they could oversee operations. But his platoon, indeed all the new recruits, were being directed toward the open fields of Hyde Park, where the fighting was at its thickest. This was where I needed to go, if I was to find my younger brother. In the space of a few hours, my world had been turned on its head. Already I had witnessed things that would stay with me forever. If the streets around the BBC had been cut off and overrun by the invaders, that meant the whole of the city centre. Westminster to Regent's Park must already have fallen. Even now, the idea seemed impossible. The army was desperately calling for able-bodied volunteers. My brother, Ben, was just 16 and filled with the hot-headedness of youth. I knew he would try to enlist as a land soldier. My mother was frightened that he would be killed. And Emily, my beloved fiancé, where would I find her? Surely not among the bookshops of St. Paul's where she was employed. I could not bear to think of her alone and terrified, imprisoned among the ruins of our great city. I felt sure she would try to reach our family home in Stamford Street. out onto Sussex Gardens, I found more devastation all the way to the Edgware Road. Out here I was vulnerable and exposed. I could see a thick pall of smoke rising from the tube station at Lancaster Gate. For years after the war, many of these back streets would remain derelict and unsafe, the haunt of those beyond the law. But for now, the streets leading down toward Marble Arch and Hyde Park were filled with smashed vehicles.
After the nightmarish chaos of the devastated streets, the gloom of the warehouse felt oddly safe. It crossed my mind that I could remain here in the dark, hiding until the danger had passed. thought made me shiver. Had these Martians studied us in that much detail? Did they know us so well that they could create these spider creatures just to terrify us? Just as I had watched amoeba moving about on my microscope slide, so the Martians saw us. We were nothing more than germs to be eradicated. To my scientific mind, it made an appalling kind of sense.